The process of development is one of the most incredible features of a multicellular organism. So if you think about it, we all come from a single cell. That single cell was the first cell we've ever been, and that cell comes from the egg being fertilized by the sperm. And from that single cell, we get to be the organism that we are now. So how does that happen? It happens at multiple stages. The first step, as you know, is the formation of the zygote. So this happens by fertilization. So when the egg is fertilized by the sperm, we have the first diploid cell in our existence as an organism. Then that single cell will go through multiple divisions in what we call cleavage. And from that cleavage stage, in which it rapidly divides without changing size, it becomes a blastula. And it will keep going through the process of development, slowly changing shape and the cells slowly becoming more and more different. So each one starts to specify and specialize in the tissue or the organ it will eventually become. And that's what we're going to study in this unit. Going back to this slide, cleavage is, um, at this point, the cells are still for the first time, the zygote first divided. Now we have an eight cell stage, and we keep on going until we have the formation of the blastula, which is this sphere hollow in the center. Yet until this point, the cells are still very similar. If you split the embryo at any point in time here, the result will be two identical embryos. This is actually part of how identical twins form. So cells at this, at this part are not really committed to a specific, becoming a specific tissue. They are what we call totipotent. They can become anything, any part of the embryo. So these cells at this point, if you do anything to them, if you split them, you will result with new embryos. That they can form a completely entire organism, including a placenta. And this is the question of how does a single cell slowly become more and more determined and more committed to a specific path, becoming a specific type of cell. So we go from a cell that can be any part in the embryo to a cell that as we go through development, its path becomes more and more limited. So that if it says, I am going to be a cell in the mesoderm, now that cell will only give rise to tissues that derive from the mesoderm. So for example, um, the mesoderm gives rise to muscle, so that cell could become a muscle cell, but it will not become a, nervous, a nerve cell because those cells develop from the ectoderm. So that cell is already committed to being a specific type of cell. And we categorize cells depending on their capability of becoming different cells. So we start with what we call a totipotent cell. This is a cell that can be any part of the organism. So we said those cells in the cleavage stage, if you split them, you will be able to create a completely new embryo, split it into two, four, eight embryos, and each will have not just the embryo itself, but it can also form its own placenta. As we go through development, then cells start limiting what they can become. And the inner mass cells, for example, they are pluripotent. So at some point, the cells divide between those that are going to be the placenta and those that will be the embryo. And at that point, what they can become becomes limited. So they have limited options. Then we also have option, uh, cells that are called multipotent. These are cells that can give rise to multiple cells. An example is blood stem cells. So they can give rise to any type of blood cell, white blood cell, red blood cell, different types of white blood cells, but only within that lineage. They cannot become a neuron or they cannot become a muscle. They are limited to that family of cells. And finally, we have unipotent cells, and these are cells that can only give rise to the same type of cell. So they're committed to being just one type of cell. So to recap from the beginning, a totipotent cell will be a cell that can give rise to any cell that forms that organism, including the embryo and the placenta. Cells in the cleavage stage, as the cells here, are that type of cell. If you split them at this moment, you will end up with complete separate embryos. 
On the other hand, the cells in the inner mass, so these are the cells located in this area, they've already separated from the cells on the surrounding sphere, the cells in the sphere are called the trophoblast, and these ones are the inner mass cells. So that inner mass cells, they can only form the embryo. Which type of cell are those? And if you remember from previous slides, those will be pluripotent cells. So those are cells that can give rise to the embryo, but not the placenta. So they're already limited in what they can become. Next question, if you have an hematopoietic stem cell, those can, can give rise to many types of blood cells. So you can see here this hematopoietic stem cell, and it can give rise to erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, all these different types of white cells white blood cells, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, um, monocytes, platelets, all sorts of cells can derive from that hematopoietic cell. What type of cells are these? These are multipotent cells. So they can become many different types of cells, but within a restricted lineage. And to finalize, plants also have stem cells, and they also have cells that can become almost any part of the plant. And those stem cells in plants are called meristem cells. And cells have the apical meristem, so if you look at the, at the uh, axis of each leaf, a cell has, a plant has a little bud where it has meristem cells, and if you um, chop the plant, that's how they can develop completely new branches from the parts that still remain. It's because of these meristem cells that can differentiate into any tissue in the plant.